Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel again. I am Ademola Badmos. Please, if you are coming here for the first time, please like and subscribe. And since we are still in the process of building the old playlist, um, you can also hit the notification bell. So when the new video drops, you would know. So like I uh, um, said in the last video, we'll talk about element locators today. So let's get right into it. So what are element locators? Let's talk about them. So element locators, basically, they are objects that are used to identify web elements on the web page. So what are web elements? Your web elements are actually the HTML elements that you already know. And um, they are the building blocks of the web pages that you see coupled with the CSS style sheet. So with that being said, we use the element locators embedded in them. So this is what uh, we are going to be talking about here. I wanted to like go ahead and do uh, a presentation, but I lost uh, I lost uh, uh, the zeal to do that while on it. So anyways, so this is what web elements are about and what a web, uh, web, a web element locator is about and at the same time what web elements are about. So they are objects that help to identify web elements. And by using certain syntax based on the tool and language, take for instance, if you want to identify an element locator using any Selenium based tool, you will be doing, you would first instantiate the web driver, then you do a find element, a dot find element. Then you can now find the element by a particular web element locator identifier. So, but uh, when you want to do that in Cypress, you will do a dot get i think when you want to do that in playwright you do a dot locator so it is quite different in um as um, you move di through different tools so with that being said this is what your normal web page would look like the html tags and all that so all these tags inside can be identified that's what we are saying that they can be identified using these web element locators so what are they essentially? The web element locators have, um, these are the ways you can identify these web elements. These are the web element locators. You have an ID, class name, a tag name, a link test, a partial link test, a name, a CSS selector, an expert, attributes, then a data CY. Now, all these cuts across different tools, not like it is just specific to Cypress. I know I said that we will talk about just Cypress, but I feel it is important to just mention all of them just in case you are in an interview session and you're asked about the web element identifiers. So they are quite much, but let's just talk about them in a bit. So an ID as it is, is one of them, is regarded as one of the most stable one, but we'll talk about it in, as regards Cypress and why the Cypress best practice is much appreciated and um, advisable to follow even if you're not going to be using a cypress framework so id is quite stable if it is named properly and um, so is class name and the tag name is always constant you know just like we said in the in the look at the tags you can identify them by their tags oh sorry i'm in a presentation mode so you can identify probably you want to identify this button the tag name of the button is a button so you can just use button then probably some attributes with it and you identify it so with that being in it you can also identify elements by link text and partial link text i will drop some links in the description of this video that would help you understand all these types of web elements before we get into the best practices of cypress but one thing i want to mention here is try as much as possible when you want to identify elements to dissociate yourself from x path Experts allow you to allows you to build to be able to identify elements faster. It is easy to build, yes. But in the end, you'll be building scripts that are quite brittle that will lead to flaky results because experts can easily change. A major code build can change your expert identity, so it is advisable not to use expert. Only use expert as a measure of, as a measure of last resort. Even in Cypress, you will realize that uh, expert is introduced as a plugin, not something you will get by default. What you get by default in the in the, in the CSS in um, in um, Cypress is a CSS selector style. So 
let us move on into the normal classes and um, with that being said let's end this and um, let's um, pick up um, the sheets i talked about so we will talk i would add these links into the description of the video so you can see all those element locators yourself and now you can write them but i would advise you just learn how to write them in css interpretation so at the end of this towards the end of this video we'll just do another example of the same amazon script that we have done written before using a particular another particular style and you will see that it will work in identifying it so now let us go into the cypress documentation as far as selecting element is concerned in cypress the best practice is to use the data cy model which was highlighted here as you can see i had to make it bold and increase the font size because i actually want to make emphasis on that so why is this data test attribute why is it encouraged it is encouraged because it makes it easier to target elements and it can't change unlike the rest now there are situations where even id as stable as it is can change because you could be working with a framework whereby the ids are generated dynamically they are not a static assignment they are gener generated dynamically take for instance if you are working on a vue.js project there is a library in Vue.js called Vutify. Vutify can help you generate IDs dynamically. So it means if you get one ID today, by tomorrow, the ID will have changed, even if there is no deployment. Even if there is no deployment, there is a chance that the ID will not remain the same. Just ordinary reloading of the page to change the ID. So it, makes that, it means that you will just be having false positives in your script because it will keep failing. You have to keep readjusting. So you need to start looking for other ways to identify your element. So with that being said, please and please, if um, you would like an extended video on how to use CSS selector to create web elements, please drop that in the comment section and let me know and I'll make a separate video concerning that. But I would recommend to learn, I would recommend that you learn how to use CSS selector to create all your web elements. So with that being said, I'll also drop the link into this uh, about the uh, best practices of um, Cypress when it comes to element, selecting elements. I will drop it in the in the description of um, this video so let's um use now how do you create your data test elements it's important to talk about that one way you can create your data test element is to get your developers to write it into the html pages as an attribute for the particular element you're targeting just like this you just add the data cy with it so once you add the data cy with it you copy all of this and you put it in your code like when we copy all the data cy this is how it is represented in your code you copy this then you come into your code and instead of having the id like this you have um square brackets then you put that value there like this and that's all you need and this would remain the same because it is static. It won't change. It's not dynamically generated. You have to put it yourself. So it won't change. So which means that you have, um, it is easier to identify because you can actually name it towards that particular tag and what tag, uh, what particular tag functions for. Take for instance, if you have like four buttons on your page and one button is for a login, the other button is for um, logout, the other button is for sign up, the other button is for um, let's say um, check profile you no know, just for example with your data cy attributes you can actually name what each button does that this is a login button let's say you have um yes or even there is a login link a typical example is you have some pages you must have visited pages before where you have a login link that you must first click before you see the login page and after you see the login page you know when you see the login page you see a login button so when naming your elements, it became, when identifying your elements, it can become a bit confusing knowing that you've seen one login link before. But in the data CY attributes, you can actually name it that this is a login link and the next one is actually a login button. So they actually do this. They actually have um, the same name, but they have a different extension. One is a link, the other is a button and the function is different. One renders the login page while the other allows you, gives you access into the actual application. So with that being said, this is how you represent your data CY. 
and um, your developers can create it for you or you can learn how to create it yourself which is basically just knowing where it, where to knowing the in the html page to uh, edit on your repository when you work for the team it is quite easy to do i have done it before uh, but um, i cannot ex ex expose um, official work here if um, i have um, the you know, probably as time moves on if i can get someone to help me build a website i can always play around and all i will um, probably show that but um this is the best i can do at this point so um what i want to do is i want to replicate this particular eat block and try to use another way to identify it still using the css uh, method now it should visit amazon again let's call this one that so what we need to do here is um we need to identify it in, in another method and let's come here so the the search box is this but it also has a tag right now i can also use the tag and the id together that's one of the things i want you to know so what those are one of the ways you can actually combine and um, write your code um your web locators so i can say input hashtag this i can equally do that for the button as well is this one is this okay what we are using is an input as well so i can also put an input there i can also put an input here now if I run this two now, it, they will still do the same thing and run successfully, identifying the 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 site and um, identifying the element. As you can see, it has typed it in and it has clicked. It works well, and the second one still works the same way. Now I think the event that we stopped the other time would have it would have happened there on the second visit, but it didn't happen because uh, we have already done the we have already caught that event in this before script so that's why it didn't do that it didn't uh, stop us from running the second time now one last thing i would want to just quickly talk about because this is just a very short video uh, is um what you can do around your eat blocks you can decide to skip one of the tests and let the second one run by just putting an x behind it and you will see that uh, when you want to run it, only one of the tests will run and we'll see that right about now. Just trying to show you some tricks and um, you can have and the application. So what this means is that perhaps probably you've written a lot of tests and you're trying to test a particular one that is buggy. So you can actually just skip the rest and let that one keep running till you get it right. Or you might leave all of them like that and um, instead of putting an x here to skip it you can just do it only you can just do it only so it means at no point in time will it run any other one other than that so it will just ignore the rest and just run the first one alone because that's the only test it will see so at that point so there are some applications you can actually do that would, these are some of the things you can apply to your code to help. As you can see, it's only decided on running the should visit Amazon and it skipped the other one as if it was not even there at all. And um, you can, instead of using X to skip, you can actually use the command skip. And this would uh, work equally. As you can see, it has skipped the first one and is running the second one successfully so please hit the like button subscribe and hit the notification bell as well so in the next video we will begin to explore the page object model as presented by um we'll begin to explore the page object model as presented by cypress using the um default folders already created by cypress See you in the next video. Bye-bye.